welcome to Stories for Wonderful Children, the podcast where I share the recordings of the bedtime stories I've told my children in the past. I'm Dan Wendelin, your host and storyteller. Tonight is the third story of our pre-Christmas marathon, and we return to the story of Winella and Integer. She's received an invitation to join Strychnine in her mud bath and she's trying to decide whether that's the right way to approach the problem. I hope you're enjoying the story. Winella rushed back to the castle. This time she was very fortunate, because she found that it only took her about five minutes. It seemed like every step carried her a mile. And... She was quickly approaching the numeral castle. As she got close, she could see that Sad Bear was sitting out front. He was crying. When Ella said, what's wrong, Sad Bear? He said, I want to, I want to, I want to go home. And when Ella said, well, I want to go home too, Sad Bear, but we told the math fairies that we'd help them. And Sad Bear said, "But, but I don't like it here. Ellen Ella said, well, I'm sure it's very nice when the math fairies have their proof and they can keep things the way they're supposed to be. And Sad Bear said, no, I don't like it like this, when everything's messed up. But I, but, but I don't think I'd like it if everything was just perfect and right either. It would be b- b- boring. Ellen Ella said, oh, well, we told them we'd help. So she went in. And she talked to Adisha, who was the only fairy who was at the ca- in the castle at that time. The rest of the fairies were out flying from place to place in Integer, trying to right the wrongs and the mistakes that Strychnine had created. When I explained to her about how she had met Strychnine, and Adisha said, <gasps> You met her? Are you all right? And when I said, Yes, I'm fine. She said, I don't know, she seemed confused, but not really evil. She invited me to go to her mud bath with her. Ew, said Adisha. A mud bath? That sounds messy. And I said, I don't know, have you ever taken a mud bath before? Sometimes it's kind of fun to get muddy. Adisha said, well, if you must, see if you can get the proof away from her. So I said, well, I'll see what I can do. So... Uh, looked down at herself and saw that she had her adventuring clothes on and it wouldn't really matter that much if she got muddy. But she did take off her shoes because she didn't want them to be all wet and muddy. Why? Well, because it's no fun to walk around in wet and muddy shoes. Yeah, I agree. One time I jumped over a mud puddle and I landed splat in the middle and I got my shoes all mucky and muddy and I'm like, Mom, can you come wipe off my shoes? That's why Winella took her shoes off. And then she took out of her pockets things that she wouldn't want to get wet and muddy, like her phone and her yo-yo and her water gun and her picture of the chocolate bat that she carried. And she put all of them in a neat little pile, and then she walked out of the castle again. She patted Sad Bear on the head as she went by. And but she a, doesn't know where the decimal planes are. Well, she actually. Strychnine's taking a mud bath. Yeah, she got. Well, Strychnine told her she was doing the decimal planes, and uh, she asked Adisha where they were. And she drew her a map. When Ella walked off in the direction she figured the decimal planes must be, the map that Adisha had drawn showed them being really quite far away. And when Ella was afraid that she would have a long walk. But once again, the strange warping of space happened. And instead of it being a long walk, it was a very short walk. It was like it was almost just outside the castle garden. When it made Winella feel a little lightheaded and woozy whenever she went that far that fast. But no sooner had she arrived in the decimal plane, she could see that it was a very flat and that it must have rained here recently because they were indeed covered with mud. She could see some small animals sort of running from place to place in the mud, and not that far ahead of her she could see Strychnine. Strychnine was splashing in the mud and appeared to be making pies out of mud. 
When she saw Winella, Strychnine said, Hey, catch! And she made one of her mud pies into a mud ball, and she threw it at Winella, and Winella ducked, but hit her in the shoulder and got her all muddy. And Winella said, Hey! And she made a mud ball of her own and threw it back at Strychnine and hit her right in the middle of the forehead. And it went sploosh! And Strychnine said, Whoa! And Winella thought, Oh no, what have I done? This fairy has the proof. If she gets mad at me, she could she could turn me into a Winella with three heads and, and five legs. But Strychnine just wiped the mud off her eyes and laughed. She said, I like you. You're not all stuffy like those fairies. When it all said, you know, I sort of like you too, Strychnine, but I really... <sighs> you don't belong here. What do you mean, said Strychnine? I do too belong here. I'm making this place the way I like it. When it all said, that's the point, Strychnine. This place is the math fairy's place. Integer is the place where... Our math is supposed to be the ruling magic. She said, in a math, everything is very, very set, you know? Two plus two, it always equals four. It never equals five, and it never equals three. And Strychnine said, <sighs> boring. And when Alice said, well, I mean, it may be boring, but sometimes yeah, it's... I agree with Strychnine. Sometimes it's good to have things that are predictable, things that you know that no matter what, 2 plus 2 always equals 4. Strict 9 says, well, not as long as I'm around. As long as I'm around, 2 plus 2 can equal whatever I want it to. And Alice said, you know, Strict 9, you should really make your own fairyland and, and make it the way you want it to. But, you know, the math fairies, they've always lived here. They don't know any place else. This is their land, and it's not nice of you to come and steal their proof and, and just change everything the way you want. You're making them very unhappy. Strychnine said, hmm. hadn't thought about it that way. I like having a good time, but I didn't really mean to make them sad. She said, but I like it here, and I'm not leaving. And Alice said, well, could you give them back their proof so they can make most of integer the way it's supposed to be, and, and you can just use your magic to make little bits of integer a little funny? Strychnine said, no. If they get the proof back, they'll make me leave. She said, I'll tell you what, I'll do this. What, said Vanilla. Strychnine said, here's the proof. She held out a box. She said, here. She opened it up. Inside was a golden disc. As Vanilla watched, Strychnine took out her wand, which was made of a single peacock feather. And she pointed it at the proof. And... A little beam of silver light shot out and cut a little wedge out of the proof, just like it was a like a slice of pie. Strychnine said, here. She took the little wedge and she put it on a cord and put it around her neck. She said, this is my piece of the proof. They may have the rest of it back so that they can make most of Integer the boring place that they like to live in. But I'm staying and this little bit of the proof is going to stay with me, so they can't make me leave unless I decide to. And I intend to make wherever I am a more interesting place to be. <sighs> That's really the most you'll do, when Alice said. I don't think they're going to like that. They'll just have to get used to it, said Strychnine. She handed Winella the box. She said, I imagine they'll be waiting for you. When Alice said, yeah. Okay, well... Thank you, Strychnine. You're welcome, said Strychnine. As Vanilla walked away, Strychnine made a mud ball and hit her right in the butt so that she had a big splash <laughs> of mud on her butt. Ha! Ah! said Vanilla. She turned and kicked a big spray of mud right at Strychnine, but the fairy just smiled and disappeared before the mud hit her. Vanilla walked back to the numeral castle, feeling a little confused. She was used to dealing with villains that she knew were bad. Strychnine didn't seem to be evil. She just didn't seem to have any sense of responsibility. She didn't. She just wanted the things the way she wanted them, and, and she didn't care what other fairies thought. Winella was confused. She sort of felt like Strychnine was not maybe the best fairy, but she sort of liked her. She was kind of fun, but on the other hand, she was wrecking Integer. Well, thought Winella, looking into the box, perhaps the math fairies will be able to use this 
portion of the proof that Strychnine gave me to put most things back right. And I'm going to have to do some thinking about what to do about, about Strychnine. For now, I think they're just going to have to, just going to have to deal with her. She got back to the castle, and she gave them the proof. Multiplicia and Divisia were thrilled until they opened the box and saw, and then they shrieked. They said, they, she took part of our proof. She took it. She can't have it. And Ella said, look, this is the best I could do right now. Well, you need to do better. We expected you to come here and help us. And I said, I've done my best to help you. Look, you use this to put integer back the way you want it, the way it should be. And you can use it to repair any damage that Strychnine has done. She's only kept a small piece. A small piece? She kept a fifth of it for herself. Well, yeah. But I tell you what, it's getting late and I have to go home. I'll come back and help you again someday soon. Winella walked towards the Cat's Paw Highway. She felt like she wanted to talk to somebody about this whole thing. She wasn't really sure what she should do. Who about... does she want to talk to? She wasn't really sure what she wanted to do. Whether she wanted to help the math fairies, or whether she wanted to help Strychnine, or whether she wanted to help neither one of them and just let them deal with each other. She felt like she needed the advice of somebody who was wiser than herself. Oh. Now tell me, Rebecca, if you were Winella and wanted to talk to somebody and get some advice, and you had all Winella's friends, who would you talk to? She could go talk to Liberty Gibbet. And that is indeed what Wait, she did. she could talk to my friend Davis because he's really good at math. Okay, but she decided, because she doesn't know your friend Davis, she decided to go and talk to Liberty Gibbet. Thanks for listening to Stories for Wonderful Children. I created today's story, but questions and witty commentary were supplied by my children. The music was created by Brandon Thompson. Your reviews and personal recommendations are the main way that new listeners find the show, so thank you for spreading the word. I'd love to hear your feedback, so feel free to get in touch via email or social media, which are listed in the show notes. Until next time... I'm Dan Wendelin, reminding you to tell someone you love a story.